Hi there. In this video, we're going to discuss how to create uh, camera follow actions, but instead of using the main camera, we're going to use Cinemachine. All right, so Cinemachine is a subset of camera tools that give us more functionality than the basic camera. The previous video, we set up basic motion of the ball. So when I hit WASD, it moves the character of the ball around, the player. But the camera does not follow. So I've actually gone ahead and installed Cinemachine in my project. To do that, you're going to go to Window, Package Manager, and then you're going to go to the Packages, and it's going to default to say In Project. And I'm going to go to Packages, Unity Registry. And then I'm going to search for Cinemachine. And then I'm going to install Cinemachine. I already have mine, but there will be an Install button down here. You'll click Install Cinemachine. Let that install. And that will create Cinemachine, uh, Cinemachine drop-down at the top, where we can add uh, custom cameras that will give us more functionality. So the first thing to note is that when I add a Cinemachine camera, it's going to take the 3D viewport and make the camera look through the viewport from that angle. So if I go to Cinemachine, create virtual camera, we're going to start with the virtual camera. And I'm actually looking through the camera there, so there's my Cinemachine camera. One other thing to note is that when I move my virtual camera, it actually moves my main camera as well. So I'm actually going to go back to Cinemachine camera and then reset the transforms. And then I'm going to reposition my uh, camera. And you're going to rotate it down 20 degrees in the x-axis. There we go. So there's a lot of settings here. We're going to mess with a couple of these. And the first one is the body. We're going to change the type of follow to from transposer to framing transposer. There you go. So that gives us some different subsets. And then in order to follow the ball, we're going to drag our player node into this follow uh, command or follow section here. There you go. That might move the camera back a little bit. But let's play and let's see what happens now. So if I play, the camera now follows what the ball does. There you go. Move around. And as you can see, it actually is a smoother transition. So it's not a rigid stop. And I'll show you that change as well. What has happened is when the ball stops moving in the direction, the camera will slowly uh, delay that action. So previously, we also had a jump. So if it's space where it jumps, you can see as I jump, the camera will slowly kind of delay behind it. It's called damping. And that's the default setting with this type of camera rig as well. Something else to notice or note is that it may have moved the camera back <clears throat> to this default camera distance. At this point, once we add the player follow and change the body to frame and transposer, we don't want to change the transforms anymore. So then, if we want to change the distance, we come down to camera distance and decrease that if we want it to be closer. So if I go hit play now, the camera is much closer. Still follow what the, the ball does. Okay, here we go. Or I can change it uh, further away. So let's just do five and play. So the camera is a little bit further away now. So I have some basic kind of camera distance settings. If I go to lens, there's also field of view. <clears throat> I drag open my game mode or game view. If I have a higher field of view, it's more of like a fisheye lens. So um, I'm really small and everything else is really large around me. If I lower my field of view, it's more of like a telephoto lens. So I'm looking through the scope of a, a gun or a telescope or something like that. 60 is default, so I can change that. You can also play with near and far clipping planes if I don't want to have an object displayed if it's too close or too far away. There's a lot of other things I can change. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one thing that I can turn on and off is this damping effect here. So if I change this to zero for damping X, Y, and Z, and go back and play, that's going to be like a rigid camera motion. So when the ball starts, stops moving in a direction, the camera will stop moving in that direction. It's a direct follow at that point. We can add a little bit of damping to this. So I think it was that 1 as default. Let's just try a 2 for X, Y, and Z. And now the camera will delay what the body does. So the ball, the character, the ball, can actually move more left and right on the screen before the camera will pick up and catch up to it. 
So the jump should be pretty easy to see. So that's more of a smoother camera motion. It's much more natural, believable. And you can see how that would kind of blend that dampening as well. So we can play with that damping value for X, Y, and Z. If I don't want it to delay with vertical action, then I would just turn off the damping for Y. So it's going to uh, dampen the horizontal motion. But for jump, it's going to follow the jump exactly. So that's kind of one way we can make an adjustment to this as well. So that's method one of using Cinemachine's uh, virtual cameras. I'm going to delete that one and I'm going to show you another way to do this. And this is uh, the, the issue, or not issue, but the confinement is that I don't have options to kind of look around. That's a fixed camera point of view. The camera will move around follow the ball, but I can't rotate the camera around. So let's remove out this virtual camera and instead I'm going to look at the free look camera. So free look camera, uh, we'll add it to the scene. And we need a couple of things so it kind of follows the action. So we need the player for a free look to go into the follow and the look at. So let's drag our player into the follow and that we can see kind of the free look angles. And let's drag our player into the look at. There we go, so that will focus on the ball. All right, so if I go hit play, I can still move in the ball, or the camera will still follow the ball, but let's see if I can stop the ball from moving too much there. Actually, I'm just going to reset. Let's play again. But if I move my camera around, I can look around my ball without the ball actually moving. So it's just really close, so I'm going to move it away here in a second. But so this is what the free look camera can do. So it has these three uh, rigs or circles that the camera can rotate around. The middle one is the widest, the top and bottom are smaller. Um, okay, so I'm going to go down here underneath the axis control and there's a top rig, middle rig, and bottom rig. And I'm just going to increase all of these. Let's just do all these to five for the radius. Five for the middle and five for the bottom. <clears throat> I'm not going to change the height right now, but that'll make it so when I rotate, I'm not zooming in and out uh, of my camera. <clears throat> so I can play. And now I can kind of look around freely while my ball is also moving around. So I can move my ball around. You can kind of watch that as well. All right, so uh, I can invert some of these values because right now when I play, if I move my mouse to the left, it actually looks towards the right. If I move my mouse to the right, it actually looks towards the left. If I move my mouse closer to my body, it looks up. If I move my mouse further away from my body, it looks down. So that's just a you know, camera choice with the mouse commands. So I'm actually going to invert the y-axis, and I'm going to turn off invert for the x-axis. You can also change the speed of these as well if I want them to be faster or slower. So let's play now. So now if I look, move my mouse to the left, it looks towards the left. If I move the mouse to the right, it looks towards the right. If I move the mouse further away from me, it looks up. If I move the mouse down, it looks down. Or closer to me, it looks down. So then now I can kind of play around with how fast my mouse is moving the camera. So if I change my speed to like 500 for the X, and let's change the speed to like 5 for the Y, and play. Now I can move around faster with my mouse. So I can play around with the speed values as well. And if I want the camera to be further away, then I can change the radius further. So let's say 10. And let's say 10 and 10 and 10. I'll actually change the height as well. So if I don't want the camera to be that low, uh, let's say 0.8. Right? I, don't want, I don't want the camera to be that high. So I'd say uh, 3.5. And in the middle, let's say it's at 2. There we go. So that way I'm kind of reducing or increasing how close I am to the player. There we go. That looks pretty good. So then now when I'm kind of moving my uh, object around, I can move my mouse. And I have a free look camera with my, my player motion as well. All right. So those are the two different ways or base ways we can create uh, complex cameras with Cinemachine.
The first one was a virtual camera. The second one was a free look camera. There are a lot of other options we can set up, but those are the two kind of major ways that we can set up cameras. That'll wrap up this video of how to uh, create camera follow with the use of the Cinemachine tools.